Hey, this is Christian Buckley with another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm glad to be talking with an Enterprise Mobility MVP today. I think you might be our first one, but Joy, hey, welcome. Uh, hi, Christian. Thanks for welcoming to your chat show here. Uh, it, it's a pleasure from my side to be having a chat with you here. Well, it's great to have you. Why don't you give people that don't know you, why don't you mm -hmm. give us a background and who you are, where you are, and what you do? Yeah, sure. So I, I my full name is Jamalia Basura, but I generally go by the name Joy in short. Um, I'm from India. I have uh, around five years of experience in this uh, IT service sector. I am uh, ex MSFT, uh, but I presently work for ETOS as a senior consultant architect for digital workplace solutions. So basically my day to day job is like uh, engaging with clients, helping them in their transformation to the modern workplace. Um, and like I primarily specialize with uh, Microsoft Intune as the endpoint management solution and uh, with a little bit uh, of uh, engagement in the Azure AD identity and access management part. So that's all about me. Okay. Well, yeah, on the mobility side, I mean, again, it's it's uh, it's funny. I do a, a show with other MVPs and we do mm -hmm. kind of Q&A answering questions for the community. And I, I'd say every week there's one or two questions that are in and around Intune. Um, yeah, so there's yes, a lot, lot of questions so out there. Yeah, because uh, the I would say the product development team at Microsoft, they are so fast in bringing out new features. And even while working on new features, something sometimes breaks up uh, the previous features that were previously working and things like that. And there is a lot of uh, things there around in tune, like SCCM, you know, it's an on-premises thing. Like you have control over the environment, over the infrastructure. Intune being fully managed from cloud, you do not have any insight into the backend, what it is doing. And in there, like what you have is a portal where you just configure things and apply the policies. But what I generally feel is like, uh, it's good to have a knowledge of the portal, like how you configure the policies, but it's also equally important to know that how those policies are actually getting delivered to the endpoints and how it is actually working in order to like have a clear understanding of how the product is working. Uh, otherwise, like this type of questions and, and these are like general, like, uh, to be honest, these questions are not invalid or something like that. These are genuine questions which comes up like sometimes like BitLocker is not uh, working. I have deployed endpoint encryption protection policies from Intune, but it is not working. But then uh, at the end of the day, what have you done from the troubleshooting steps? Have you checked the BitLocker API right. events and things like that? So these are the things that many people are not aware of, like where to look for and what to look for, which basically I try to help with my blogs and the engagements that I do. So well, that's an important point uh, because a lot of people, I know when the, the a lot of the shift from on-prem solutions to the cloud was happening, a lot of IT pros that were concerned about what's happening to my job. And is this, you know, is this all just this, this knowledge and all the training and all my experience, you know, was it all for nothing now it, this, these third parties, these cloud vendors that own that activity. But to your point, you need to have people that understand how those services are actually running. It might yeah. have evolved and changed that role, but you still need to have that knowledge internally. Yeah, and definitely like when people, yeah, I, I also see in my organizations where I work like uh, people who used to work with SCCM and things like that, or who are like uh, highly experienced, like eight years or 10 years of experience with SCCM, like what is going to happen with it? Is it going away? Will Intune take uh, its place? And then I have to learn Intune. Uh, well, SCCM is not going away. SCCM is here to stay and it will be there. But uh, at the same time, like if you are comfortable with SCCM, you have been working with that, then Intune is also a same product from the Microsoft that is aimed to help you get a better modern workplace uh, experience. Mm -hmm. So like, uh, 
I, I believe it's fair enough if you can invest some amount of time in learning it rather than pushing it away like it's a new tool. Uh, why do I need to learn it? Right. Well, I, I think it also helps for, for organizations kind of go back to an earlier comment you made about, you know, adjusting to the, to the cloud and how, you know, different it is and, and the volume of features, because we're experiencing mm -hmm. that across every workload, uh, you know, coming out of Microsoft, you know, especially in the, the modern workplace side of things, which mm -hmm. is encompasses kind of all of Microsoft 365 and all of the, uh, you know, side products. Stack, yeah. But with all of that is to, uh, I think people are, again, a, a little bit biased. We work in technology. And so we're, we're a little more, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, kind of in tune with, uh, 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 you know, uh, not trying to use the product name, but <laughs> we're, we're, uh, uh, we're up to date on, uh, on the software development life cycle. And when we see new features that are released and we get excited about it, um, but just to, to, to almost kind of, uh, you know, take a, uh, a, a kind of a steady approach to that, to be aware that, hey, there needs to be time for, you know, bugs to be figured out, that there, there could be, uh, to your point, depending on how a feature is being rolled out. In fact, we see this example over and over again. You hear about a feature that's gone generally available GA, and yet it's not yet on your tenant. Or there's something on your tenant, but you're getting weird behavior that other people are not experiencing uh, because it might be acting in combination with other features, other products that are on your tenant that are not on somebody else's tenant. So mm -hmm. that whole idea of like, we're getting innovation rapidly but needs to be tempered with this, I think the reality of, hey, but then it takes time for these things to, uh, to, to be, uh, you know, that, that dog food experience. Well, I know Microsoft yeah. is a, both, both of us former employees, so that yeah. phrase of dog fooding our own, dog food and then yeah, canary. Our, our own technology, our own, yeah, it, yeah. it's great, but there's only so many scenarios you're able to flush out and it's inevitable. Well, that greatly reduces the number of bugs and issues um, that that the general populace experiences. That's why Microsoft does rings. They do that internal dog yeah. food. Then they do that fast ring for companies that fast say, ring, give yeah. us the raw, the, you know, the latest version and understanding that we're going to, discover a whole new batch of bugs and issues and provide that feedback back to Microsoft. Well, definitely true. Like, uh, because we are both ex uh, MSFTs, uh, we all know that MSIT or MSFT is the largest customer of Microsoft for its cloud products. So Microsoft has got a fantastic uh, amount of volume or a people to test on before they actually releases it. And, and they actually plan the releases very well like uh, even if a new feature is rolling out it it will not roll out to all the tenants worldwide at the same time it, it's in a phased manner and that is why we see that okay uh february week of 18 there is some new feature releases so it's not there in my tenant as well because it's still under the roll uh, rollout plan mm -hmm. so things like that it happens and that is why you have the insider preview tenants and all those things where you can actually go out and check out earlier than before it makes the availability in the normal tenants there. Yep. And, and uh, obviously like say, for example, it, it is not like uh, say today there is a policy that is not working, which is not, uh, uh, well, I will say it, it's not a configuration issue. It's not an endpoint issue or a device specific issue, but it's a issue of Microsoft service does not means that the entire Intune service in whole worldwide will have that issue. It can be a tenant specific issues. And we have seen that where there are some bugs related to that particular tenant, which uh, the backend team fixes out. So things, things like that, this, this happens in the cloud side and yeah. Yeah. I, I, and it's just something that you need to, again, set your expectations, your, your IT organization, it may change where some of the you know, the ownership of the, the, the platform, you know, lives, but um, to be clear on what are the SLAs that your organization has in place, understand enough about the service to have a better idea of what's happening. And so as you get that information back from Microsoft of what might be happening in your tenant, that you can relate back to your end users, um, something better than, uh, 
<laughs> yeah, and definitely. It goes and, up well with customers. No, yeah, it, it 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 never works well in the service industry. You know, like uh, today, if I am going to raise a ticket with Microsoft Premier Support, then I would want a first resolution. But being on that side, also, I know that we have to go through the process. We have to collect the logs. We have to diagnose those because you come and tell me today that I am facing this issue. Um, I may not have a quick solution to give to you, but maybe uh, some some of the issues will have a solution. Some of the issues may not because those requests a deeper analysis and diagnosis of what is happening because say for today, if I am, uh, I, I speak to you as a Microsoft support now uh, from the past experience. So if, even like if, if I have to troubleshoot an issue of yours in your environment, I need to have some prior knowledge of your environment because without that, then I, I won't be able to help you up. And, and getting those details from the other side is sometimes a pain because also there are a lot of stakeholders that you need to involve in the calls because not everything is under your control or you would, as an admin, like even if I am, I talk as an admin, I may not have access to the conditional access portal because that is a feature of identity and access management. Right. But if the Microsoft support person asks me, then I have to get someone from the identity team involved in the call. We have to schedule another this is how the delay goes on but obviously at the end of the day everyone is just trying to do their job and get it fixed right. but it's it's the patience that you need to show uh, when a problem comes up because there is a great team out there which is there to help out and even like most of the times uh, you can just when, when even like us like when we face issues uh, before reaching out to support or anything else, we would be first going out and checking out the community. Uh, like uh, if, if there is already something mentioned in there or if someone has already worked on some things so that I, I get some notes on there or things like that. So there is a great bunch of people out there who are ready to help uh, if you know how to get the help. Well, and that's, well, yeah, There, there's, again, that, that's good training, I think, in general of, you know, for any employee um, to to help them to understand what is the best way to make a request. And if you're experiencing technical issues, like what to go and be aware of, what to document, what to go and do. It's why, uh, you know, uh, as IT professionals, we're always frustrated and we share our frustration. Yeah. When we dial into support and they walk us through, it's like, if you tried turning it off and on and kind of questions and walk you through like a, you know, it, you know, it, it, is the is it on like what browser version? Of, like like all the basic things with like look, I've yeah. I've gone past all those things. Like yeah, but unless I know, I go through the steps. It's all we've done is we've moved that conversation which used to happen with internal IT over to you know working with Microsoft to resolve it. But yeah. you still have to collect that information. You still yeah, have to do those steps in that process. One of the benefits, while it may be. It may feel like, and likely it is like longer on that, that activity, the turnaround time and to work, go through Microsoft. The benefit, however, of using a cloud service and working with Microsoft or something like this is, is on the back end when you start identifying issues, Microsoft is able to go, you're not just alone as you and IT department with your deployment on-prem, they're actually able to go say, yeah, we're seeing dozens of companies that are experiencing this and here's what we've determined, here's what's worked for these other organizations. So you're often able to get for those larger issues that are the software solution ba you know, based problems, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, more data and a faster response to those kinds of issues uh, versus going and trying to do it on your own. Um, so yeah, most of the most of the critical issues uh, related to cloud because the enormous amount of data that Microsoft collects from its services uh, the telemetry, like uh, I, I don't believe any any other service actually collects this amount of telemetry that Microsoft collects. And uh, even before like a service will uh, make a hit, Microsoft will have an alert that something is wrong. Uh, and that is why there are like uh, you get those uh, uh, service uh, health checkups in the portals where you say that uh, something is going for a periodic maintenance or something is going down, uh, then the team is working on there. But still, yeah, even after that, there may be tenant specific issues, but then 
those those uh, say if I, if i say a tenant specific issue it does not means that it is specific to the tenant it is specific to the scale unit or the msu so who, whoever other customers are there on that same msu or the asu unit they will be facing the same issues as well so uh, sometimes uh, you may be the first sometimes you may not be the first because there is a global support out there and you do not know if any other organization is also facing the same issues or not and obviously there are solutions there are things that microsoft comes up with and things even if it is not a solution at that moment at least they will come up with a workaround yeah yeah no exactly it's well i mean like, like anything you know collaboration that's the benefit of collaboration yeah um you, so you've got a, a you know wider net to cast out to try and and find uh you know examples and solutions yep so what what kind of stuff are you actively presenting on so and and for those again that are watching like he brand new mvp so congratulations again to that thank um, you uh so so what kind of things are you actively talking about presenting on writing about out in the community uh so i actively write about uh, so basically like uh, mdm tech space is my blog uh where i write about the endpoint uh, management with intune things but most of my blogs do not talk about like how to configure things because those things you can easily get out from the microsoft docs and things like that but mostly if you if you have uh, seen or if you have followed my blogs or if you have followed through my video sessions that i give uh, the training sessions uh, uh, over the things uh, i mostly talk about how things are working inside like from the endpoint perspective so you as an it pro because if if i am working with intune today and i am not in microsoft i do not have the microsoft backend to go and analyze data so whatever i have is the endpoint to work with so how you can better use that endpoint to get an analysis of how the policy is working and whether it is working or not this is something i uh, put emphasis on and like if, if i say so currently i'm work uh, working on a few topics which are currently in preview like the um, the temporary access uh, temporary access pass uh, tap uh, for the going passwordless solution with azure ad then i'm also working on some interesting things with endpoint analytics the remediation scripts that you can do mm -hmm. and so things like that this is this is currently what i'm focusing on and like as i said i mainly focus on intune and how you can better learn intune from the endpoint perspective not from the service of the portal because you have to have to understand like if you are today in a problem what you would look for and where you would look for instead of going and asking or uh, things like that so for today example say for example i say you are have you are facing a bit locker issue and you come to me saying that hey i have deployed this policy and it is not working it came up with the error so i would obviously ask for what is the event that you get on the bitlocker api but if you don't come up with that and i tell you okay go and bring me that that is a delay so when you are working with a policy you should be knowing about where and what to look for for that particular policy and these are the things that i like try to put emphasis on yeah now again that's great advice whether it's for end users or it pros that are managing these for their organizations to understand like the, the, the core information that a support person is going to want to have to help resolve that issue, things that you should be looking for. Um, yeah, it's, it's important to, uh, to, you know, understand all those components. Yeah. But that's a, yeah, again, it's, it's, it's really important to understand how do I, you know, what do I need to provide to, to work with support with my, uh, you know, engineering or IT organization. If I'm, you know, have that relationship, I'm managing that with Microsoft. What's going to be the most efficient? That's going to get me, you know, so I'm not having to go back and go find any of this. You know, every time I I want to report an issue, I'm going to go and go through kind of my steps. Have we answered everything so that it's the most efficient, uh, you know, use of both of our times when I contact Microsoft to resolve that. Yeah, definitely. So like being in the support in a service-based industry or being in a support in a product-based company, 
uh, the formula for support is same. Like if, if you have an issue and you support uh, or you raise a ticket or submit a request for help, then you need to provide with the details that is there. And if you provide the details at the same time when you submit a request, it makes life a lot easier for the support person. Yeah, that's right. Because that's, I, yeah, it, you're right. It, you remember it's, uh, you know, it, it, it's as frustrated as we are with you know, having to go through those those basic questions yeah. with the support person, you think they enjoy it? Every conversation that they have starts that way, you know? Uh, but anyway, yeah. Well, that's, yeah. that's really interesting stuff. So, well, it's great. Well, it's been great to get to know you and learn more about what you do. And, and of course, in the, in the associated blog post, we'll have, you know, links and things that are out there for the folks that are watching the video or listening to the podcast. How can they uh, find out more about you or get in touch with you? So, uh, uh, so basically my website is uh, uh, is my name only so it's uh, you can just type in joymalia.com and you can get to mdm tech space and uh, you get my all contact details from there uh, you can find me in facebook uh, you can find me over linkedin uh, definitely connect with me and you can also find me over twitter but uh, like uh, I, I i won't be able to pronounce my name here all over this because it, it will all sound <laughs> yeah. we'll provide the links and stuff it'll be out there that you'll be able to see it yeah so so at the end just uh, type in joymalia.com and go to my website uh, the blog site and you will have all the links to get connected with me there excellent well joy it's great to uh, to meet you and congrats again on the mvp award and and uh, Thank we'll you. hopefully see you maybe next year, next calendar year at the next MVP summit. I think the next time yep. we do it in person. So, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Because, yeah, it, it's still going to be a lockdown year again in 2021. Uh, it is. It is, unfortunately. So, yeah, uh, 2021 is a lot like 2020. So, all right. Well, well, thanks a lot. We'll talk to you soon. Yeah, sure. Bye. <laughs>